Our church is well blessed with talent, not to the least of which is Cheryl Presnell. She's asked, I've asked her to play for you today. Cheryl loves to play, but she's, uh, she's got a difficult piece in front of her today, and I ask your prayers especially. Normally, I would introduce our speaker as one of our new guys, but he's not new anymore. He's old, one of our folks. Michael Withrow is here, and uh, he's, he's been a blessing to our church, and we thank you for him. We certainly do. Thank you, Michael. You come and close any way you want to at any time you want to. We're going, home, we're going home at 12, but you can close any time you want to after the business meeting. Okay. Cheryl Presnell. I've had quite a few people comment on my tie this morning. I went in my clothes and I seen a red tie and I says, no, they'd think I was Tom Moody. He's losing so much weight, you know. So I, I, I've never wore it before, but I've got a whole closet full of ties. Back when I was pastoring, it seemed like every birthday, every Christmas, I got ties. And the only time I wear them now is when I preach. I used to have to wear them all the time. This morning, if you would, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Thessalonians. All the T's are together if you're having a hard time finding it. (laughs) Which I am. Thessalonians was a wonderful church. Many of the letters that Paul wrote were letters of correction, you know. But uh, when I hear a preacher get ready to speak on the, on the book of Thessalonians, I think that, wow, we're going to hear about the second coming. We're going to hear about the coming of the Lord. But that's not what you're going to hear. Even though I'm ready and I hope you are. 
I'm on, I've been on studying about walking for quite a while, and, and like I say, when, I, when the Lord put me over here to Thessalonians, I thought, wow, I'm going to get to preach about the second coming. But we're still going to talk about our walk. You know, Enoch walked with God. That's what I want to do. I want to walk with God. He was raptured. That's what I want to be. I want to be raptured. If you have your Bibles in, in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4. Finally, my, finally then, brother, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received how you ought to walk and to please God. You know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that you should know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor, uh, not in passion or lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should default to, no one should take advantage or default his brother in, in this manner, because the Lord is the avenger of such, as we also forewarn and testify, for the Lord did not call us for uncleanliness, but holiness. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Gracious Father, we just so thank you for your word. Father, I don't know where we would be without this precious Bible. Thank you, Father, for it is... It is the guide that we follow. It is our love. It is my love. I love this word. Fathers, we come this morning, we'd ask you that your Holy Spirit would come and touch my lips. That the Holy Spirit would come and touch these, your people's ears. Father, for we have come, Father, to worship you, to speak of you and the Lord Jesus. And as the word told us that we're to be abound more and more. Father, we just thank you today. We thank you for the pastor. We thank you for all parts of this church. There's so many, Father, that work so hard, and, and I have not enough time to, to speak each one's name. But, Father, bless each one. You know them. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally. You know, that's like preachers talking about. He's over probably thinking, finally, he's getting through. But that's not what the apostle means here when he, when he, when he says finally. And in most of his letters, he says this very, very same word because he's getting to a very important point that he wants you to know. In Ephesians, he says, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know, and he does, and he tells us many places, like I say, most of his writing talks about how we should, you know, how finally he gets to his point. He says, finally then we. Boy, I'm taking it word for word, ain't I? I want to invite you all to our Sunday school, by the way, before I go any further. Our Sunday school teacher takes the, the scripture word line by line, uh, chapter by chapter. We just go through it as, as it is written. We have a wonderful Sunday school class, and, and I would invite you to come. It will really get you ready for church. Anyway, he said, finally, my brother and we, go turn over to the next, next over to the first, first verse. It said, Paul, Sevelius, and Timothy. This is the we. You know, Paul didn't travel alone. He took two, three preachers with him. And he talked about finally, I mean, they, they probably had a finally because they all stood up and did their testifying. They all stood up and done their preaching. Not in different days, in the same day, in the same time. See, it's so he says it's we. And I, I was up here a few weeks ago and I, I talked about the we. 
Even the Apostle Paul wasn't, didn't do his work alone. It was always the we. He says, finally, my brethren, we urge and exhort. Those are strong words. Strong words. A lot of times he says, we beseech you. We beg you. The Apostle Paul was interested in the people of God, and, and this was a great church. And like I say, over in, we're still over in chapter 1, and it says, in, in the second verse, it says, We give thanks to God always for you, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love, your patience of hope in Jesus Christ. I want you to know this morning that many times we don't want to put work and faith together. You know, it sounds like, oh, but James tells us faith without works is dead. It's of no value. Faith must have a corresponding action. You cannot, faith is not just believing something in your head. You have to do something about it. You know, so that's faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. And the sermon this morning is about pleasing God. Walking the pleasing walk with God. The book of Colossians says you can fully please the Lord. Fully please Him. Does that mean we're going to be without sin and never make a mistake, never do anything wrong? That's not what he's saying. He's talking about our walk. I do stumble. I do make a mistake, but I don't sit back after I make that mistake and after I stumble and say, oh, I'm such a pathetic sinner. I don't say that. I get up and I start walking again, asking God to forgive me, and he has, and it's in the past, and I'm walking with Jesus. He says our, our work of faith. The Bible tells us about faith over in the... Over, I call it the faith chapter, over in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. It says you must believe that he is. And if you believe that he is, you're halfway there. I would hate to be in the rapture, brother, and just get halfway. I don't like to fly. I, in fact, I am not going to fly if I have any choice. And I sure don't want to be caught halfway between here and heaven. And he said, you must, be, you, must believe, you must believe that he is, and you must believe he is the rewarder of those who diligently, not haphazardly, diligently seek him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And he knew their work of faith. And he couldn't know their work of faith if it was just their thoughts. It was about their deeds, and they did it through faith. And he says, I know your labor of love. That might be harder, for, harder than faith. I know your labor of love. Do you know that work is a labor? There are sometimes there's some folks I just don't really want to love. I don't like them very much, but the Bible says I must love them. Saved, lost, it don't matter. Black, white, green, it don't matter. I must love them. It's a labor. I wasn't going there, but I want to turn over to the sixth chapter of the book of Luke. If you have your Bibles, turn there, or you can just believe what I'm saying. Okay. Thank you, brother. 32 second verse. I, I, I go in my Bible when you're preaching too, brother. I'm still blowing from the old school. You know, the preacher talks about you must, should have something in your hand, and I do, brother. I got the Word of God. In the sixth chapter, we're going to talk about the labor of love. He says in the sixth chapter, the 32 verse, he says, If you love those who love you, what credit? What credit is that to you? 
Do you really know we get credit? Brother, do you know we get credit? We get credit. What credit is that to you? Uh, he says, even sinners. Hmm. Even sinners love those who love them. He says, and if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners. Even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those whom you hope to receive back, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend receiving much back. But love your enemies. Do good and to lend, hoping nothing in return. And, you will be, and your reward will be great. And you will be the sons of the Most High. Are we the sons of the Most High here this morning? Then you must labor in your love. We labor in our love. Even sinners love those who love them. Let's go back to the book of Thessalonians. Boy, I should have lost my marker here. Is it the New Testament? I don't read much of the Old Testament, my brother. My, my, you know, I was reading in Hebrews just yesterday that uh, it's obsolete. The law of Moses is obsolete. You know, there's those that are trying to, trying to serve the law of Moses and to serve Christ at the same time. They're trying to be in grace and they're trying to be in the old law at the same time. I was that way. When I was saved, God saved me from my sin. He delivered me. He took me out of bondage, the bondage of sin. But in the church I was in, there was so much teaching in the Old Testament that I fell into that category that I went from one bondage to another. I went under the bondage of the law. Thy shall this, thy shall that. Finger pointed at you every minute of the day. What are there, 300, how many laws, brother? 332, is that it? 30? 622 laws. And not one of it showed you good. Thank God. Thank God it took me maybe five years and then I was delivered from the law of Moses. You know, the Bible tells me that if, 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 the, if, the law, if the word written in stone was glorious, do you know what was written in stone? Some of you do. If what was written in stone was glorious, what we have is so much more glorious. Thank God for the Spirit of God. Thank God that I have the law in my heart. Thank God that he saved me and he loved me. And my salvation is about love and joy and peace and long-suffering and goodness and kindness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. That's the fruit of the Spirit. My law comes from the Spirit, and I'm free. And I never understood freedom so much until I was set free from this law. Church was not fun, because the law and Christianity don't mix. It's like oil and water. It just don't work. And I love this Bible, and I love the stories in the Old Testament, and I even love the law. I get over and read the law and I say, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I don't have to do that. That I'm not under those things anymore. That I'm set free. The Apostle Paul was preaching in the church of Galatia. And for churches of Galatia, you know, I don't feel bad for going from one to the other like I was doing. and Going from the freedom from sin and then going into the bondage of the law. Because Galatia done the same thing, brother, the whole church. 
And the Apostle Paul told them to stand fast. Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has set you free. And don't be entangled in the bondage of the law. Or the bondage of sin. If you don't know Jesus this morning, you're under the bondage of sin and he'll set you free. But don't exchange one prison for another. And he says, I know your patience. Woo, do you have patience? I have patience because the Bible tells me that patience comes from tribulation. I've seen my share. You've probably seen your share. But that's where patience comes from. It comes from tribulation. I learned lessons sometimes the hard way. Even though there is an easier way. He says, I know your patience. And boy, the time goes so fast up here, brother. I don't like that clock. I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, put a calendar up there. <laughs> Oh, anyway, he says, finally, my brother, and I'm back to chapter, five, uh, chapter 4, verse, ten, verse Thessalonians. Finally, my brother, we urge and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. I don't care where you are. If you're a baby Christian or you're mature, we need to abound more and more. There's no place to sit down and retire as a Christian. And he's talking mostly about not the work that we do, but he's talking about our character. Who we are. What we are. You know, we all have strongholds in our lives. We all have things that we're a little weak in. And those are the things that we need to be walking in, operating in. The things that I'm weak, you know, God, God, the Spirit of God, if you ask Him, He'll show you where you're weak. He'll show you where you need to improve. And He tells us to walk in those things. Because, because the walk is about pleasing God. It pleases God when He knows, He sees me and He knows my weakness and I'm walking away from that weakness. I'm walking away from that weakness, but that don't take it out of my life. Only God and His great power will take it out of my life, but I will never be gone until I start walking the other way. I've got to walk the walk. I've got to talk the talk. As I've heard the preacher say more than once, it matters how we live. It matters how we live. It matters about our walk, not just where people see us. You know, I love that scripture. I, lo I love it over there where, where what they call uh, uh, the Beatitudes. I heard that some people call it the dispensations. You know, he says, when you pray, go into that prayer closet by yourself. It matters who we are by ourselves. Much of the walk that we have to walk we have to walk by ourselves. A lot of times we do have help. Thank God we have a pastor. Thank God, you know, we have Christians that love us and we have help. But we have to walk that walk ourselves. God made the children of Israel to walk for 40 years. And the Bible said they still ain't going to enter into God's rest. They're not going to enter. It matters how you walk. It matters how you walk. I'm ready for be like Enoch. I'm ready to leave right now. I'm ready for that day to come. But he says, I urge and exhort you. How strong the words, how more strong the words could he used? I urge and exhort you uh, that you should abound more and more. Just as you received of us how you ought to walk, do you know how to walk? If somebody hasn't told you like the Apostle Paul told them, it's in the book. It's right there in the book. I don't walk by the law. I walk by the Spirit. 
The Bible says if you have the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. You can have the Spirit of God and not walk in the Spirit. You're walking in love, you're walking in joy, you're walking in peace, you're walking in long-suffering. Are you walking in the fruits of the Spirit? The Bible tells me, you know, there's two kinds, there's two spirit. there's two different, <laughs> uh, we can either walk in the flesh or walk in the Spirit. We get to choose. You know, that's what freedom is. I get to choose. You know, they set the slaves free back in the Civil War. But a lot of them went on just like they had been when they were slaves. They were set free. But they still lived in slavery. When the Berlin Wall came down, many of those in Germany didn't want to come into the part of the free Germany. They didn't know how to be free. Do you know there's a lot of people in the church that don't know how to be free? They don't know how to be free because they're still walking in the law of Moses. They're still having somebody, somebody or, or, or a figure of somebody pointing their finger at them all the time that you're wrong, that you're bad. I was married once. It was like that. Not really. That's just kidding. But he says, I exhort you and I urge you because you, all, you know how to walk. You know that song, All You Need Is Love. If I have love, the Bible says it covers a multitude of sins. When did the church stop loving the lost? When has the church stopped saving souls through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ? The Bible talks about this day that's coming in the Thessalonians when Jesus comes back. And I got one minute. And he said there must be a come out falling away first. And if you don't think we're there, brother, we're there. It's the only thing that we can do is walk. Walk. I still got one minute. I like that clock. And I'm going to say something I say quite often. I had a preacher friend. In fact, what a dear friend. He brought me, you know, into the ministry. His wife used to tell me all the time, he said, preach me a sermon. But use words if you, only if you have to. It's our walk. Too many of the Christians today, instead, instead of letting people see you as the glory of the Lord and saved of the Lord, I'm just a sinner. I'm just an old sinner. So I, well, then you're going to be just like him. I want to be like him. You know, that's what it used to be in the Christian church. Oh, man, I want to be like that. But we've reduced ourselves, you know, we, it's false humility, and the Bible talks about this false humility. We are the sons of God. We are the sons of God, and it's time that the church starts walking as the sons of God and not the sons of the devil. It talked about walking in the immoralness and that's permissible in some denominations, in some churches. How can that be? There has to be a falling away first. Stand fast. Stand fast. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we just thank you for your word. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are the God that is coming soon. And Father, we, like Enoch, 
want to be walking as, 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 as you went one way Enoch went the same way he was almost like dancing oh father we just come and we see things that is going on in the world today we see what's going on in the church today and I mourn the Bible said blessed are mourned those who mourn and I hope you're mourning over some of the conditions that's going on in our church I hope you are mourning over those who have been deceived and have, and have exchanged one slavery for another. Oh God, help us to walk in this glorious, glorious gospel. You didn't set us free, Lord. You made us free. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For now, indeed, I find thy power in my. Change.